I'll tell you about TikTok. <laughs> Trump is going to keep TikTok going. Whereas Biden and Paris, they have no idea what it means. And all it's going to do is be good for China the other way. It's no good. We're going to keep, we're going to save TikTok. In a desperate and pathetic attempt to stay relevant and gain new voters, Donald Trump sat down for a weird interview with the racist and misogynistic far-right streamer, Aiden Ross. Seriously, this strategy to lean into Gen Z and young kids might be the weirdest thing to come out of Mar-a-Lago since Donald Trump and Jeffrey Epstein use it as a pedophile playground. Or even as weird as the time that Donald Trump had dinner with white supremacist Nick Fuentes, who Ross has platform in the past as well as other neo-Nazis, so interviewing Trump makes a lot of sense. What I'm about to show you with Aiden Ross is so weird and unhinged. I mean, you could ask ChatGPT to come up with a thousand scenarios and none of them would be what you're about to see. Now, unless you're an underage teenager, a gamer, or an incel, you've probably never heard of Aiden Ross. I mean, why would you? He's a glorified moron who was permanently banned from Twitch for hateful conduct and has also said the N-word during his streams. Okay, do a spin. I got you, you know, I got you, I got you. You know, I'm, I'm just wearing, you know, I'm just wearing some cool chill, chill shit. Like I said, this team up between Trump and Ross is totally on brand. Oh, and I almost forgot. He streamed porn to underage kids. Yikes. I wish I was kidding, but I'm not. There's no f***ing way. What? You're just having this on stream. Is that bad? Pretty sure that Trump's Project 2025 is anti-porn, so this is a little awkward, but 100% uh, weird. Donald Trump is down in the polls, getting crushed by Kamala Harris in fundraising, losing Republican voters, and Trump's team thought the best way to recover was to have him do his cringy two-handed jerk-off dance with a racist idiot for a TikTok? I don't know how we ended up in this universe, but if someone can Dr. Strange us the hell out of here, please do it now. This interview started in what I would consider the most boring and low-energy way possible. Look at this small audience in the back. I have so many questions. Why are they behind a velvet rope? How much were these people paid? And did the granny in the wheelchair even know where she was? Feel free to guess how this cringy and weird interview came to be. I'll wait. Now, if you said Dana White and Trump's sons, Don Jr., Eric, and Barron, you'd be correct. Well, I can just tell you that one word uh, is would be outstanding. My sons told me about you, and, you know, they, they told me about how big, dad, big stuff, Aiden. So... I just have to say outstanding to do what you've done at a young age. Donald Trump has no idea who Aiden Ross is. He just listened to his son's recommendations of who they said was cool. Also, the fact that a 40 year old and a 46 year old regularly watch a 23 year old streamer who sniffs people's butts is really weird. But leave it to them to be the political geniuses behind this meeting. I mean, they truly have their finger on the pulse of the people if those people were white supremacists and neo-Nazis. During the interview, Ross gifted Trump a Rolex, which appears to be an FEC violation as the value of the Rolex is well over the 3,300 FEC contribution limit. Brendan Fisher, Deputy Executive Director of Documented, a watchdog group that tracks and investigates money in politics, tells Rolling Stone that Ross's gifts appear to have been provided to Trump in his capacity as a candidate and because he is running for office and are therefore considered contributions to his campaign. Giving gifts valued at tens of thousands of dollars to a candidate amounts to an illegal and excessive campaign contribution. I suspect that once Trump talks to his lawyers, we'll get an announcement that he is turning down the gifts or donating them to charity. This interview is already off to a great start. God, these people are morons. And it wouldn't be an interview with Donald Trump if he didn't try to attack someone, especially a woman. He made sure to attack journalist Rachel Scott. He's still bitter after she publicly humiliated him during the National Association of Black Journalists event. You have pushed false claims about some of your rivals, from Nikki Haley to former President Barack Obama, saying that they were not born in the United States, which is not true. You have told four congresswomen women of color who were American citizens to go back to where they came from. You have used words like animal and rabbit to describe black district attorneys. You've attacked black journalists, calling them a loser, saying the questions that they ask are, quote, stupid and racist. You've had dinner with a white supremacist at your Mar-a-Lago resort. Why should black voters trust you after you have used language like that? I walk in and this woman starts talking about she talked about, we have, let's get rid of the elephant in the room. And she starts talking about racism and everything. I said, you didn't even say hello to me. Mr. President, we so appreciate you giving us an hour of your time. I'm doing this out of respect to the black community. And we're getting record numbers, as you know, in the black community. Wait, wait, hold on. 
Something is off about how the audience responds to Trump and Ross throughout the interview. Just watch. I'm willing to bet that there is a person or persons behind the camera cueing them to clap and lift their signs. Watch how they all awkwardly raise their signs one by one. The guy in the blue MAGA hat even tells one of the three black guys in the group to lift his sign up. And then this white guy does the cringiest and weakest handshakes ever known to mankind. None of this is real. This is all staged, just like Trump stages every photo op, rally, and appearance to make it seem like people actually support him and like him. When really, they're paid audience members like the guy behind J.D. Vance raising the you're fired sign every time he speaks. I'm sure you gathered by now, but Aiden Ross might be the dumbest person ever, which is Quite a feat considering we've got Eric Trump, Marjorie Taylor Greene, and Herschel Walker in the mix. I mean, Aiden Ross is so dumb that he supports Trump because he thinks that President Biden banned abortions. First of all, what happened with abortion is, is ridiculous. You should not be able to tell a woman what to do with her body. That's first of all. That's a woman's wait, body. Wait, you think, wait, you think, oh. you think. <laughs> yeah, why are we doing this right now? Oh, wrong oh, screen. Oh, You're so oh, brain oh, dead. You're oh, so oh, brain oh, dead. Oh, oh. All right, Josh, Josh, do you have a sister? Do you have a sister? Yeah, I have a sister, bro. Okay. Wait, wait, you think Biden yeah. was the one that wanted abortion to be? That's that's what you think? That's, like, that's, that's can, how that works. He's a president. He can, you know what I'm saying? He can <laughs> not ban it. What do you mean? That would be Donald Trump, the guy who constantly takes credit for overturning Roe v. Wade. I got rid of Roe v. Wade. Supreme Court justices and the Supreme Court ruled to end the moral and constitutional atrocity known as Roe v. Wade. Getting rid of uh, Roe v. Wade was an incredible thing. I'm the one that got rid of Roe v. Wade. And what I did by killing Roe v. Wade, which everyone said was impossible. For 54 years, they were trying to get Roe v. Wade terminated, and I did it, and I'm proud to have done it. Seriously, Aiden Ross is so dumb that I feel like I need to put up a warning before playing this next video. Warning, this video may decrease your cognitive function. Viewer discretion is advised. What does a fascist mean? Um, it means you are a far right authorization on you on ultra does it ultra ultra nullitist. Oh my god, ultra analyst, anal, analyst, political ideology movement characterized by dictator leadership, centralized autocracy, militarism, for, forcible suppression, suppression of opposition. So I don't know what that means, bro. I swear to god, I don't know what the fuck a fascism is, I don't know what the fuck that is. Benito Mazzulli and Giviante Gen Gen Genitale and Jason Stanley. Like, who the f are these people, bro? Never heard of my fucking life. What is an example of a fastest? Yo! All right, bro. See what I'm saying, chat? Like, this is why I don't f with y'all, bro. Like, dude, like, this is what the f I don't. Bro, I don't f with y'all, bro. I do not f with you guys, bro. This is the genius who interviewed Donald Trump. This whole interview was just another MAGA scam trying to grift people into believing that Donald Trump is popular. And if you want to protect yourself from scams and fraudsters, make sure to check out today's sponsor, Aura. Just the other day, I did a quick Google search of my name and email, and the amount of info that was publicly available was unsettling. My full name, home address, phone number, relatives, it was all out there. If you didn't know, data brokers sell your information to scammers, spammers, and anyone else who may want to target you. That's why I've been using Aura, the sponsor of today's video. Aura shows me which data brokers are selling my information and automatically submits opt-out requests for me. Cleaning up my information not only helps reduce the amount of spam I get, but it also protects me from hackers who could use this information to help them access my social media accounts, bank accounts, or other sensitive information. I don't know if you saw this, but AT&T revealed that over 73 million customer records, both existing and former customers, were released on the dark web. They recommend those affected use strong passwords, monitor account activity, and consider credit freezes or fraud alerts from credit bureaus. Well, Aura does all this for me. And best of all, I don't have to download several different apps just because a company couldn't keep my data secure. If my info was compromised in the AT&T data breach, I wouldn't worry because Aura is always on, always doing the hard work of keeping me safe. I value my privacy and I value yours as well. You can go to Aura.com slash Gabe Sanchez to start your two-week free trial, also linked below in the description. That's A-U-R-A dot com slash Gabe Sanchez. In under three weeks, Donald Trump went from picking J.D. Vance, a couch f***er as his VP, to being interviewed by Aiden Ross, a chair sniffer. I wish I was kidding, but this glorified moron sniffs chairs that people sit in. It is really gross and really weird. Here's Aiden Ross with his good friend and groomer, alleged rapist and sex trafficker, Andrew Tate. I'm done. I fixed you. Where are you going? 
I'm ready, bro. I'm really gonna do this shit. Y'all don't understand, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm really gonna do this shit, bro. Like. I'm sure Ross's relationship with the Tate brothers is definitely gonna win over female voters. Andrew, you know you actually helped me stop masturbating? Because every time that I would masturbate, I would think of you. And I'd be like, nah, this is not right. I'm gonna stop. <laughs> what the f And if that didn't win them over, here's Ross sniffing a girl's chair. That's, that's even weirder. Let's go. All right, I'll make eye contact with you. Wow. That's Ew, why are you yeah, so it's weird? Too oh, and in case you were wondering, Ross also sniffs farts too. Yeah. What the hell is wrong with these people? I genuinely and sincerely want to thank the Trump campaign for absolutely crushing it lately with its marketing and PR stunts. And by crushing it, I mean crushing their campaign's future. Seriously, Donald Trump gained nothing from having this interview. I mean, just think about who Aiden Ross's audience is. It's not the people sitting behind Trump and it's definitely not that old granny in the wheelchair. Most, if not all of Ross's audience are straight white males in their teens or early 20s. This whole thing was like having a neon sign over Mar-a-Lago that said, Welcome to Weirdville, which I guess is not all that different from normal days at Mar-a-Lago. Just watch Aiden Ross as he gifts Donald Trump a Cybertruck with the assassination photo wrapped around it. Which is slightly amusing when you remember that the Cybertruck's numerous safety issues essentially make it a death trap on wheels. This also might be an FEC violation as the value of the car is well over the 3300 FEC contribution limit. So you know what they did? AI. What Google did is they took or they let it happen See the Secret Service agents here? Yeah. They're angry in there. They put smiles on their face. Right. You heard about that. Yeah, no, no, no. Google did not do it. Someone else did it. Just like someone else made AI images of Trump with black people. The reason they had to do that is because no one likes Trump. He's a fucking racist. He couldn't even get a real photo with black women in Atlanta. Trump's campaign is in a downward spiral and this interview did not do him any favors. It was an absolute disaster for Trump as he gained nothing from it and most likely lost people along the way with many Republicans asking why he even did it in the first place. Like how J.D. Vance went on the Full Send podcast but ended up exposing himself as a shitty father. So I call Trump and I'm like, hey, sir, what's going on? He's like, J.D., you missed a very important phone call. And now I'm going to have to pick somebody else. <laughs> and I'm, you know, I like tense up and almost have a heart attack. And the, the crazy thing about it is my son, who's seven, is in the hotel room with me. And he's really into Pokemon cards right now. He's going through a Pokemon phase. Are you guys into Pokemon? Oh, I am. Back in the day. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. a big phase right now, I think, in general. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, he's really into it. So he's trying to talk to me about Pikachu. <laughs> and I'm on the phone with Donald Trump. And I'm like, son shut the hell up for 30 seconds about Pikachu. This is the most important phone call of my life. Once again, Donald Trump and his bigly smart campaign team have given Harris and the Democrats another gift wrapped in a huge bow. So thank you guys. Please keep it up. Well, that's all for me today. Thanks so much for watching and feel free to follow me at I am Gabe Sanchez. What was that is made possible by viewers like you. And if you'd like to support the show and help us grow, you can contribute to my Patreon at patreon.com slash I am Gabe Sanchez. Thank you for your support. So until next episode, I'm Gabe Sanchez and this has been, what was that? <laughs> <laughs>